getting late. It's time to pick a spot. This neighborhood is pretty good because it's beside a industrial area and a park, so I'm hoping I get lucky. have one right here. There we go. Now it's still too bright to uh, to get into the trailer so uh, I'm going to go eat first. Okay, here we go. Time to go skilk. Well, here we are. We have now gone stealth inside an A-liner. It may look claustrophobic, but it's not. It's actually quite comfy. I'm on pillows and uh, some cushions in the back here. I've got a reasonable amount of space. I've got about that much space for my head in this position here, but I can move up just enough. I've got a light right here. But I've got containers. Here's one container for my clothes. I've got a slide out drawer here to keep stuff in. Got my water, lots of snacks, stuff like that back here. And right behind here, I've got storage, Kleenex, and a book, which I will probably read tonight. So there's lots of storage space, sleeping bags here, my coats here. Um, it's actually quite cozy. Well, when in Rome, do what the Romans do. If the Romans go to A&W and eat onion rings, whatever road food you can find is what you're going to eat. Or if you prepared stuff. I guess if I brought sandwiches and stuff like that. But uh, if you've been driving and you grab something at a gas station and then you go stealth and uh, eat and go to sleep. That's all you need. So what might you ask can you not do while you're going stealth in an A-liner? Well, you can't stand up. That's obvious. You can't cook. You can't uh, have a shower. Um, you can't use the furnace. I could use the furnace, but it's going to be noisy. So as I'm supposed to be quiet right now, that would defeat the purpose. Noise is a huge problem when you're going stealth beside the road. So, the one absolute must is earplugs. And I'll be using those earplugs tonight because there's cars and buses and motorcycles just going within feet of where I'm sleeping. So, it's not the ideal situation, at least when you're in an urban area but it could certainly be worse. One question that you'd probably ask is, what happens when you have to go to the bathroom? Because you don't want to draw attention to yourself going in and out, and chances are there's nowhere out there to go to the bathroom anyway. So you're kind of stuck. You gotta stay inside and figure it out for yourself. One of my favorite things is 
the coffee cup or the soup container. As far as number two goes, well, that is more of a challenge. Um, I'm usually quite regular. I only go in the morning, so I'm usually good. But if nature calls, and stay away from cheap burritos or anything before you go in here because you don't want to have the runs in the middle of the night. That would be a real pain. However, if nature calls that way, freezer bag or the big scary jar. You can be just like Little Richard. You'd have to read a Little Richard's uh, autobiography to understand that one. Um, be creative, but it's better to be regular. So one thing I did find is uh, with the sides down here, it lets in air. There's a lot of air coming in here, but it also lets the light out. And if you're in total darkness, like not under a street lamp, and you have a light on here, chances are people will see a little glow on the south side of the trailer. So what I did is I took a little box and I cut the middle out of it and I just put that right over and that concentrates the light down so it's not at the sides anymore. It's just at the front. And actually I can turn this light off. There, you can see how that has really isolated the light. It's just pointing down. It's not at the sides anymore. So I can use this light. I can read. Um, very comfortable reading at this light. And uh, I don't really need the other side lights. Um, it's quite comfy. And then to turn it off. Okay, time for a few tips. Number one, don't stick out like a sore thumb. Blend in. I mean, if hopefully your vehicle and your trailer is not bright orange, so it sticks out. Now, it seems odd to say you could be in an A-liner and not stick out from a crowd because A-liners do stick out. But it's down. So it's just like any other trailer in storage position. And... I don't really think many people would suspect anybody's in there. There's no windows, there's nothing to give you away. So another really good question is, is stealth camping legal? Well, sometimes it is and sometimes it's not. Depends on the municipality, uh, local bylaws. Um, I would pretty well say that in hardcore residential areas, you're probably going to run into problems, so I'd avoid them. Um, not only that, it's common sense. Don't park in front in, this, in front of somebody's house you don't know because you're taking their spot and they'd have a right to complain about it. So, you know, have, have respect. Uh, I'm, uh, right now I'm, I'm camped on a end of a street. There's a few cars going back and forth, but there's lots of parking spaces, so I'm not taking anybody's parking space. Uh, the worst case scenario is you get a knock on the door. If a policeman comes and you say, hey, sorry, I didn't know. Um, I'm just looking for a place to, uh, to park and sleep the night and I'm off in the morning. And usually they're going to be okay. They might tell you to move and you move. And that's the other good reason to uh, always be ready to go at a moment's notice. And this is perfect. I put on my shoes, out I go, start up the car and away I'm gone. So am I worried about somebody breaking in in the middle of the night? No. First of all, the door is locked. I mean, yeah, they can try breaking in, but I'm more concerned about the my Jeep than I am the trailer. And not only that, in this little storage compartment, which is uh, where I typically keep my tools, and it's the one with the door to the outside, I have an ax. So if you feel there's somebody out there, just get the panic button on your car remote and set that off and they'll be gone, guaranteed. Well, 
I think it's time for bed. Time to bring the sleeping bag out. So stealth camping isn't for everybody I know. Um, but it's nice to have an option in that one time where things didn't go as planned and you really just need to pull off somewhere and have a sleep and not get too worried about uh, who's going to see you and uh, where you're going to sleep. It's very easy to do, takes a little planning. Yes, I had to do a little bit of modifying to the, on the trailer, but uh, it's doable and uh, it's not that bad. So it's pretty roomy, can't complain really. And it was, uh, it's quite warm right now, especially with the big warm sleeping bag. Lots of cars going by. That's the problem with sleeping on the road. Well, I think that's it for the night. Earplugs in. Anyway, good night. Well, believe it or not, it is morning. It's 621. It's still dark out. I'm going to hang tight here a little bit. Uh, it wasn't that bad. Uh, I slept well, real good. After the buses stopped coming through around midnight, then uh, I didn't hear anything until like 5 in the morning when uh, some of the commuters start up. So. It all depends on the location you uh, you pick, but I think this is a good one. Truck stops are a lot louder than uh, than residential streets or these uh, in between commercial areas, so uh, it wasn't bad at all. No hitching up, no putting up the stabilizers, just do her. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, happy camping. Brand new day.